everyone. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, November 17th, 2022. In this episode, we're going to do a body language study of a specific Royal Python. I hope that this will help you be able to interpret the body language of your own Royals or other Royals that you might interact with. And I have a very important reminder for you. Of course, our species focus is Python Regis, that's the Royal Python. And I want to remind you that the default anti-predator or defensive behavior of this species is to freeze, ball up their body, and hide their head between their coils. If you want to read more about this and how this anti-predator behavior is different from that of some other Python species, this is a very good paper. It is called Fear-Based Aggression and its relationship to corticosteroid steroid responsiveness in three species of pythons. I've talked about it in other videos, but I just wanted to have this serve as a reminder that if your royal python is freezing, is balling up their body, is hiding their head in their coils, or is hiding in general, that it is because they are scared. It's a fear behavior. It is not docility. It is not comfort and relaxation. If they are doing this, they are afraid, and if they're doing this in your presence, it's likely they're afraid of you. This is the same snake in different emotional states, and I want you to look at these pictures, picture one, picture two, picture three, and tell me if you can interpret them. The tools that you have to work with for this body language interpretation are the green zone, yellow zone, and red zone behaviors that are in our body language guide that I have shown in many, many videos that's available on the homepage of my website and that I will show you again in this video. Your other tool is the stress levels that you should know by now from watching my videos. Good stress, tolerable stress, or toxic stress. And then you also can use descriptive emotions that you think that you're seeing in the body language of the snake in these different points in time. And those would be things like fearful or defensive body language, nervous or uncertain body language, curious or exploratory body language. I also want you to consider the temporal order of the body language you're seeing when you make your decisions as to how you should be modifying your behavior based on your snake's behavior. We're gonna look at some behavior sequences and I want you to think about these and think about how you might behave at the end of each behavior sequence based on what the snake is doing. So what's happening here? This is the same royal python, her name is Seashell, in different states of emotion. So in picture number one, we see her completely frozen and balled up, hiding her head in her coils. In picture number two, we see that she is somewhat balled up, but her coils are looser and her head is sticking out. She seems to be looking around her environment. And in picture number three, she is not balled up at all. She is orienting towards stimuli, her neck is moving forward, and she is more stretched out. What do you think has, is happening here if we start with body language number one, move to body language number two, and end up with body language number three? And how should you respond by the time the snake is in position three? Now, what do you think is happening here in this behavior sequence? In picture number one, seashell is stretched out in a mostly rectilinear position. She's orienting towards environmental stimuli and she is tongue flicking. In picture number two, now she has coiled up in a ball and she's starting to withdraw her head towards her body. And in picture number three, she is completely frozen, balled up, completely hiding her head within her coils. So how would you modify your behavior based on the snakes behaving like this? Let's take a look at both of these behavior sequences, comparing one to the other. The initial reaction that Seashell has in behavior sequence one at the top is that she is completely balled up and hiding her head in her coils. And in behavior sequence two at the bottom, she starts out as her initial reaction in a mostly rectilinear position, orienting towards environmental stimuli and tongue flicking. In both sequences now, she moves to a position that's in the middle that I would term a transition period where she's evaluating or assessing the environment, making a decision as to what she's gonna do next. And her coils are loose, but she is coiled up and her head is out and she is looking at her environment. It appears in sequence one at the top 
that she is starting to push her head out. And in sequence two at the bottom, she's starting to withdraw her head in. So then we get to the final behavior where at the top, she has decided to move forward. She's now stretching her body out and orienting towards environmental stimuli. And in the behavior sequence at the bottom, she has decided to continue withdrawing her head into her coils. And now she is completely balled up and frozen and hiding her head totally within her coils. Your behavior based on the final reaction of the snake in each of these behavior sequences is going to be different. And you should be able to determine by now, after watching many of my videos and prior discussions that we've had in episodes of Worlds at the Ranch, what you should be doing or what is okay to do. If the final behavior you're getting from your snake is what you see in the top behavior sequence versus the behavior you're seeing from your snake in the bottom behavior sequence. This is the same snake. We are looking at the same snake throughout this presentation today. These would be green zone behaviors or good stress. Seashell in all of these pictures is orienting towards stimuli, is mostly stretched out in a rectilinear position, is looking around the environment, is moving forward, is tongue flicking. She is exhibiting behavior that is correlated with exploration and curiosity. Now we see seashell in a little bit different emotional state, which I would term tolerable stress or the yellow zone. Now she seems to be experiencing some trepidation, some worry or uncertainty about what's happening around her. And I would term this as an evaluation period where she's deciding if she should relax and go back to exploring or whether she needs to revert to some type of defensive behavior because something could be threatening in the environment. In the top two pictures, she appears to be moving away from something. She has made the decision that she's not comfortable with where she's at and she's going to leave the area. In the bottom left picture, she's starting to bring her head back within her coils and she has coiled her body. And in the bottom right picture, she is sort of coiled up and positioning herself between a hide and between the wall. And the body language that she's exhibiting with her head and neck, again, looks like she is a little bit worried or uncertain. All of these pictures to me tell me that she is worried something could be threatening to her in the environment. And she thinks that she needs to either pause momentarily to assess or that she needs to start moving away. Now this behavior is pretty blatant. She is completely balled up with her head in her coils. And these are two different pictures. I know they look almost identical. This is the typical red zone behavior for Python Regis that demonstrates they're experiencing fear, anxiety, and distress. Whether or not that stress is toxic or not, we don't know. We have to base that on behaviors that they exhibit after the stressful experience in order to determine, well, was this stress tolerable or was it toxic? But it is a severe stress state, and this is absolutely defensive behavior. It is the default anti-predator response for Python Regis. Again, this snake is scared. It's afraid of something in the environment and perhaps fears for her life. And so she has balled up completely and totally hidden her head within her coils just not wanting to cope with what's going on around her. Definitely red zone behavior. Let's look at both behavior sequences again. And I'm going to give you my answers for how I would behave at the end of each sequence. Again, the initial reaction is on the left. The transition or assessment and evaluation period the snake is likely going through is in the middle. And the snake's final behavior is on the right. In the top sequence, the snake is here in a very defensive, scared position, totally coiled up, hiding the head. The middle picture then, as I approach the snake, she loosens her coils a bit and she looks out at me. And then in the final behavior, she has completely uncoiled and she starts moving around the net and she's orienting towards me and moving towards me. So things are okay. So I am free to interact with her and in basing my own behavior on her behavior, we are going to have a stress-free interaction if things continue in this direction. Let's look at the bottom behavior sequence. So we start out with the snake here where she is 
comfortable and relaxed in a rectilinear position, tongue flicking, orienting towards stimuli, and then I approach. When I approach, she coils up and she starts to withdraw her head into her body. And then she decides, I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm afraid you could be a predator that's going to eat me or harm me. And I'm going to totally freeze, coil up tightly and hide my head within my coils and hope that you go away. And in this circumstance, I should go away. I should leave the snake alone because she has ended up in this fearful and distressed state. Now we reviewed the most common species typical behaviors to watch for in world pythons, but remember that individuals may vary. So I suggest that you review the body language chart, that you know general snake body language and also start to learn the individual body language of your own snake. This is that body language chart and these are a common but not a total list of comfortable and relaxed behaviors or behaviors that the snake might be doing if they're exploring, a list of behaviors the snake is going to likely exhibit if they are moderately stressed or assessing and evaluating a situation to determine if they need to get defensive or not or retreat or if they can go back to being relaxed or explore. And then the red zone behaviors which is the snake is likely over threshold, they're distressed, they're in fear for their life perhaps, Definitely, if the snake is in the green zone, we can proceed with our interaction. If the snake is in the yellow zone, we also need to stop and back off and wait to see which direction the snake goes, back to green zone or does it escalate to red zone? And if the snake is in the red zone, we absolutely need to back off and leave the snake alone. These are common behaviors for most commonly kept species of snakes with families as pets. It's not going to be all of the over 3,000 species of snakes that are out there. And some of these behaviors are not going to be typical of royal pythons, but it doesn't mean that you won't see these behaviors in royal pythons. We just went over the typical royal python behaviors, but you might see some of these others as well in individuals. Based on the overall body language guide, I do want to remind you that if your royal is completely hiding or has assumed an overtly defensive posture, those are also times when you should leave them alone. So not just when the snake is out in the open and balls up and coils and hides their head, but if the snake is hiding completely, leave them alone, don't bother them. And if the snake is being very defensive and they're striking or hissing or essing their body, please back off and give them distance because that's a distance creating behavior and it is their request for you to give them distance and space. If you have any questions about this or anything else related to animal behavior, training, welfare, or enrichment, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can reach me through my website at behavioreducation.org. I am also on Patreon at patreon.com slash behavioreducation. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and of course right here on YouTube. Until next time, everybody please remember to always be kind and love your animals.